Hi YouTube, I'm Jake. And I'm Steph. And welcome to our channel Wake Up Witnesses again. We wanted to start where we left off and uh, do part two of how we woke up to the truth about the witnesses. After we had our first daughter, two and a half years later, we had our second daughter and this was in 2011. And everything went really well. Um, pregnancy was great. Delivery was great. I had her at the same birth center where I delivered our first daughter. And um, everything was fine up until it was time for the placenta to be delivered. Um, it just wasn't coming out. And at that point, there was a midwife and an RN in the room with us. And they told me that I would have 30 minutes to deliver it naturally, at which point they would give me a shot of Pitocin, which they did, um, and a, an IV in my arm to increase the blood volume. So the Pitocin was to stimulate stronger contractions and hopefully get it out but that there was a risk of hemorrhaging if it didn't come out naturally. They told me that they would give me one hour for it to come out, at which point they would transfer me to the hospital that was nearby. I had already made the decision not to accept blood no matter what. I had my medical directive on file with them. Um, I reminded them of it at this point when the issue started um, being discussed. and. I was really calm. I just told them, do whatever you can for me here because if I get transferred to the hospital, there's nothing that they're going to be able to do for me. Um, I kind of was just watching everything happen. And it turns out that the RN that had come in to assist the birth was also a witness. Um, and when they gave me the shot of Pitocin, she told me, pray to Jehovah. And I kind of knew that all I had at that moment was just prayer and chants. And it didn't really bother me. I mean, I, I, I didn't really have time to think about it. I mean, my mind had already been made up. Um, but looking back on it, I can't believe that I was willing to risk my life for something that I had never investigated fully. So um, luckily, three minutes before the deadline of one hour, the placenta ended up coming out and there was minimal blood loss. Um, but just knowing that I had never researched the other side of the blood issue um, and I was willing to sacrifice my life for it, it's, it's a sobering thought. I felt the same way um, since I was helpless just watching all this occur. I had had some questions related to doctrine, doctrinal issues, but this made me think to myself, here I am, um, a father and a husband, and I'm help. I'm helping make these decisions for my wife and my family, and here I am not even researching the other side for the blood issue, when it can result in it can be a life or death issue. I went on this you know binge of research of uh, looking at forums, asking for articles, even collecting bound volumes from the Kingdom Hall uh, that people were giving away, so I could see the actual you know the actual bound volume, the actual article, and. Uh, I wanted to make sure it hadn't been tampered with by apostates. So while he was doing this researching, I didn't, I didn't even know that he was researching the issue. I had just put it out of my mind for a while, um, just grateful that it hadn't happened to me, mm -hmm. that, that I didn't end up having to lay my life down for it, and I just kind of let it go for a little while. Um, and then one day Jake asked me the question, he said, what, what would have happened if you would have laid your life down? Um, and you would have died, and they changed their position later. I mean, I couldn't get that question out of my mind. And he just left it at that. I think I, I gave him some response. I think I said, at least they would have died faithful to Jehovah. Mm -hmm. But Jehovah doesn't change, so how can the governing body change their mind on certain doctrines when Jehovah doesn't? And um, I after doing lots of research and not really getting an answer, you know, this is coming from, I was completely devout, very, extremely regular at meetings, out in service, uh, believed it was God's one only organization. And I finally asked the elders to meet with me so I could get a, a better answer than the ones in the CD-ROM. Kind of told them my thoughts and presented the articles and they um, just kind of said, oh, well, you know, just trust in Jehovah and every, the faithful and discreet slave, will, will, their light's getting brighter, you know, the typical, typical spiel. And that wasn't, 
wasn't really, that kind of disillusioned me even more because there wasn't really an answer and these guys are like the equivalent of the clergy. They're supposed to know what they were talking about. So I ended up writing a letter later to the uh, Watchtower, the actual organization in New York, and I didn't get an answer. I think it had been like a month or maybe six weeks and I still hadn't had an answer. And I kind of thought, oh, they're not going to answer me. And instead an elder called me and said, oh, can me and this other elder come over and we will, we can talk about how you guys are doing and kind of almost like a little mini shepherding call. And instead they popped on me once they were there that uh, the branch had told them they, they should follow up on me and about my questions and see, I think, where my motives were. And it just became almost like a visit of like a little mini witch hunt. And ended up being, Stephanie was there. And it ended, ended up, the question was asked at the end of the visit, do you trust the faithful and discreet slave? And that was uh, interesting. A little bit spin on it, because usually I think uh, for like judicial cases, they ask, do you believe the faithful and discreet slave is directed by God or uh, God's organization? But they asked me if I trust the faithful and discreet slave, and I didn't have an answer for them, because obviously I had all these new, um, new thoughts in my head, and I was trying to process that. So I think it was really great that I was there when he met with the elders because it gave me an opportunity to witness it for myself. I mean, I, I knew a, a little bit that he was questioning, um, but I, I didn't realize that they really wouldn't have an answer for him. Their mm -hmm. answer was, do you trust the faithful and discreet slave? Which is, it's not an answer. Um, mm -hmm. The questions that he had were really specific and, mm -hmm. and clear. And knowing that there wasn't an answer to this was really eye-opening for me. And the blood, the blood doctrine is uh, specifically interesting, almost like shunning, because uh, various people from denominations or from different religions around the world, they might not agree with everything specifically to their denomination. But when it comes to um, laying your life down on the line or ending up, you know, having to shun your children or your family members because of specific ones you don't agree with, that kind of takes on a whole new meaning. Right. So Jake would just drop small questions or opinions on articles. He was never pushy about his opinion. He would just bring me an article and he would say, why do you think they said that there? And I would ask him, well, how did you even find that quote in that article? You know, automatically I was suspicious of his activity, like how he came across a, a certain quote but he said does it does it matter where I found it if this is what they said and it's so obviously un mm -hmm. unscriptural um, yeah it was directly from the you know the mother's mouth so uh, from the publications I didn't just print off um, pages from you know quote apostate websites like these were actually open up the bound volume and show her the quote like a big one was in the late 60s, and I have the Awake, I think it's the Awake, it might be a watchtower, that says that young people, you have to face the fact that you will not grow old in this system of things. And it's just like, being able to show somebody that, like, right in front of them, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. So, so thanks for watching our video, and we'll be sure to post more.